What's good, Bears fans? Bear down. Path and designer, John Yurkovich, closing the week out. It's Friday, Yurk. It's it Friday. It's Friday. It's Friday. Two days before the Super Bowl. I'm so excited. Uh, man, listen, they, they, there's been so much going on. Everybody's at the Super Bowl media day going crazy. Where are we? Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're in beautiful. We're, we're in Chicago. We're, in Chicago. we're still here. We're not it's at the Super Bowl. <laughs> we did not get to the Super Bowl. Nope. The, year the, goes the by. tickets didn't go in the mail. That's what no. they told me. They yeah. said the tickets didn't make it in the mail. Yeah, another year goes by. We don't get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> should, should I not believe that is what, you, it's like what 12, you're telling me? 12 years in a row without the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, First 11, 12 had a Super Bowl. Yeah, Last yeah. 11, not so much. Yeah, well, if the Bears get there, we'll get there. You know what I mean? Well, uh, that's true. I, if the Bears do get there, we'll get there. If the Bears go, we'll go. So, Bears, win it so we can go. We want to go. We want to have some fun out there. We do want to go. I want to ask you about some of the things that we heard at Media Day. And uh, I think EO's got some interesting prop bets for us that uh, he wants to break down some of the fun things that the Super Bowl brings in. But the one thing that we had heard, you know, Roger Goodell talking, talking about turf and grass and how he wants every field to have grass. We had EQ St. Brown on, on Monday, and he said grass is better. It just is. And I don't understand why the NFL won't just mandate that. You've been able to play on both. I think turf was really getting popular around the time you were in the NFL. Right? Well, I played on the old crappy turfs that were around the league. When I played it was at like concrete. I played basically. at Riverfront. I played at Three Rivers Stadium um, in Pittsburgh. It was turf. I played in Philadelphia Veterans Stadium when it was turf, yeah. and it was the crappy turf. It was the stuff that really hurt you. Uh, it was basically uh, a rug laid down on top of asphalt. So I played on the garbage stuff. So this new stuff is actually a whole lot better than the old stuff. Um, and I think the grass fields, if you remember, and you look at some of the footage from some old games that San Francisco played in the 80s, yeah. and you look at the way fields ended up getting destroyed, I think the field technology is a whole lot better in the last uh, 30 years. So I think you get to a point now where the drainage is exceptional, that you hardly ever, even in the deluge, have really a substandard field. No. And then you could replace I, I, what whatever part of it. Yeah. Yeah. What the bears have added. Yeah. I, I love. And I never thought that was going to work up here because I didn't know if you could bring, you could build a hardy Bermuda. Yeah. But that could stand the cold weather. Yeah. So and it, they I, found something. This is the best field I think we've ever had in my life. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Like I, I can't remember the last time I've seen the just chunks of grass flying up. Yep. Probably the Nagy era. Or, or the chunks in the helmets. Remember, Cap Boso had that big chunk oh, yeah. in his helmet oh, yeah. on a Monday night football oh, yeah. game. I haven't, the haven't seen the grass be as bad. Right, yeah. So, But, no, I don't think every field should be a natural field. I don't think it's possible. Mm. Indoor facilities can't have natural fields. So you get the best field that's possible for your guys. You try to make it as good as you possibly can. Um, I don't know if the data that's out there, I think it's even. I don't think that you get more injuries on one than the other. I know it's easier on the legs and the lower back to play on grass yeah. than it is to play on the turf. But, hey, take that into account when you're signing someplace. Take a look at how many games will be on natural grass and how many games will be on the turf. And if you if it's that important to you, go someplace where a majority of the games are on the grass. I think what was interesting, too, was that – what EQ brought up, and I, I, I'm not a huge EPL guy, so I don't know. But when they come over here to play, basically, if it is a turf field, they put grass down. They move the turf. They put grass down. Well, soccer's played on yeah. the grass. So does does that kind of say that they can ma- ma- uh, maintain grass in those states? Well, I mean, they, they, do did, they do it in Philadelphia. I'm yeah. not Philadelphia. They do it in Arizona. Yeah. So – when the World Cup come, came to town, they had a separate field for the soccer facilities, and they bust that field in. These new stadiums that they built in Tottenham, and I believe Wembley may have it too, where they've got a separate field that just kind of pops up that's maintained by itself underneath the main field. Yeah, uh, These are new stadiums being built in 2023. Yes, yes. So the soccer pitch and the other pitch for football, well, uh, basically it's having two pitches. So when one pitch gets torn apart, they go with the other pitch, and then they go down, they grow, and they maintain, and they and they they, they manicure uh, the second pitch to get it the way it needs to be. So uh, it would make sense if you're trying to play football and football. Yeah. You can't do it on the same pitch because the NFL guy is going to tear it to smithereens. One thing that I so thought- those th- those places thought about that already. I don't think you do that here in the Unidos Estados. I've got no problem with the turf. 
Um, the turf they have now, I don't have any issues with. I don't have a problem with the hybrid field they have up in Green Bay. That's natural grass with synthetic in it. Right. One thing I thought was interesting that Goodell had had talked about, and he was very blunt about, was all the streaming services we're getting in football now. York, everybody's got a bit of the NFL going on. How? What's your opinion on how far spread the NFL is now? Where we got a game on Amazon, we got a game on Hulu, we well, got yeah, HBO. No, first of all, you, you got Thursday nights on Amazon. Yeah. So the, you know that's commitment. Peacock gets one two games. Yeah. That's and we not, got Friday football coming that, out. That's not really a commitment. Friday football's coming. We got Friday football coming. Want to make sure we destroy the high school game while we're at it. Wonderful. <laughs> Good. Great plan. <laughs> plan Friday nights. Wait, wait till you see what the audience dips and what the numbers are for Friday night football games. Because guess what? Nobody gives a rat's ass about Friday night football in the NFL because their kids are going to be playing high school football. Mm. So... I, if you want to be morons play on Friday night, go ahead. Nobody's going to care. You, you think? You know, usually they wait till college football ends up to screw up Saturday nights, yeah, right? Yeah. So what are they going to just produce Friday night football all week? I guess. I guess they say they're taking the. Uh, they're, they're taking the whole weekend. Yeah, they're taking well, the whole weekend. Let me get that. So every once in a while, stupidity reigns, and uh, in this case, stupidity won out over common sense. So congratulations, the dumb decision maker that did that. Well, we do you think this will be better on the the players instead of the Thursday night game? This will be better received because of the extra day. Are they getting rid of Thursday night football? No, Thursday night's they, still there. But what I'm saying is that you're you're um, that answer is no. Okay, <laughs> so it's just stupid. Basically, <laughs> they felt like doing something. Well, I'm telling you, sometimes you know, with greed comes stupidity. Sometimes yeah. when you become greedy, um, you make dumb decisions and. Dumb decisions end up getting made, and that there you go. That's what you've got. I think whoever's got the Friday night thing, whoever wins the Friday night thing, yeah. needs to win it at a discount. Because mm. I promise you, I promise you, all those high school guys, those are guys, those are NFL fans, kids that are playing high school football, are NFL fans. Yeah. How many Friday night games? How many high schools are there? On that play on a Friday night, it's insurmountable. Yeah, you're going to have yeah. they're going to be in the stands. The grandma, grandpa's going to be in the stands. NFL fans, right? Mom and pop, cousins, boom, friends, all your cheerly, all this, everything, all your Taylor Swift fans. Yeah, where are they going to be Swifties. on yeah. Friday night? Where are they going to be? They're going to be in the bleachers. Yeah. I think there's a story about that. She's head cheerleader. I'm in the bleachers. It's a love story. <laughs> all right, is that a Swift song? Is That's that a, a Taylor Swift, Swift song. One hundred percent. Yeah, correct. Where's everybody going to be? Now, down in Texas, Friday night football is king. This is true. So we're going to have the Dallas Cowboys playing on a Friday night, and you've got Friday night te uh, Texas high school football. Are they going to cancel the games? No. The games go on. The games go on. You'll notice when they start doing if they do it, when they do it, you'll notice the Friday night numbers are down because your NFL fans won't be there. They'll be at high school football games. Do you think that this is something that they'll like kind of test out in preseason and maybe pull away from quickly? The preseason numbers won't tell you anything because nobody gives a rat's ass about useless, wasteful preseason football. It's garbage. Uh, preseason training camp is garbage now, too. Yeah. Unfortunately, the first three, four weeks of the NFL season have become the preseason. So the games count. That's become the preseason. Everything you see in the preseason, unless you're a good coach that values the preseason, uh, it's it's a garbage product. It's garbage from the Hall of Fame football game through to the start of the regular season. That six week period, the way it's looked at now in the NFL, is absolute pure garbage. Yeah. I've I've said that I said it this year that I really wanted to focus in on how teams approach the first four games of the year this year. And as I watched most of the NFL, I think most of us went into week five like, wow, it's finally time to play some football. Are you guys awake now? Does it feel like that is just, I guess, wasted time by not utilizing the preseason or wasted development? I get it. You don't want to risk guys. But literally the first four games of the season, I feel like teams are viewing as we'll use this to get our bodies ready. And for the Bears, they started off 0-4. Where maybe if you were prepared a little bit wow. better, you start the season one and three, two the, and two. The preference would have been for them to be prepared. Yeah. Okay. They crapped the bed against Green Bay, 100%. right? 
Second game, they went down to Tampa Bay in a very winnable game. What would they do? They crapped the crap bed. bed yep. They went to Kansas City, and Kansas City was looking to get right after losing to Detroit, winning their second game and not an impressive fashion. They get the Chicago Bears on the schedule, and boy, they're licking their chops oh, down yeah. there. And they did. They destroyed the Chicago Bears. And then you come and you play Denver at home in a game that you were dominating, that you were playing very well. You decided to let the Denver Broncos go crazy in the fourth quarter. And you found a way to lose a miraculous game. So, yes, you started 0-4. I saw one practice. It was supposed to be the the best, most physical practice they had. It's the first time they're going to go pads and they're going to go do something. The Chicago Bears that was were first, Yeah, that's the first day you came. First one. I'm on the sidelines and I'm looking at it. And I'm watching and going, what in the hell am I watching? I didn't, I didn't identify. I couldn't identify it. Yeah. I've been. I've been involved. I've seen. I've gone back. I've seen a thousand practices in my life, and I've participated in over two thousand practices in my life. What I was watching with what they were doing was, to me, if they didn't have helmets and I didn't see footballs flying, was unrecognizable. Really? It yeah. Was, it, you, your assessment. There was no physicality no, at all. No, yeah. Nothing. If there you're going to have your one physical day, yeah. I've practiced with no pads on. Right. I understand the importance of having to practice with speed. I played for Mike Holmgren. I understand that Mike Holmgren didn't want to beat the living crap out of each other, but that's during the regular season. Your work has to be done in the preseason. The physicality has to be there in the preseason. You've got to lose your legs. You've got to get that soreness into your body. You've got to work that soreness out of your body. And if you never allow yourself to do that as a football team, then you spend the first three weeks of the NFL season doing it. Yeah. And so, that's what we saw. And that's literally what we saw. If, and I, I feel like they, we saw that around right. the league. If too. they, do, it, it is. If they don't understand that, and you know, all these coaches are uh, different coaches. They've come in, and they've decided this is the best way to do it. You're wrong. You are dead, dead wrong. Period. You're wrong. And some of the performances in the first year, or well, the first four weeks of the season, just yeah. the overall level of NFL play was substandard. Yeah. Substandard. It, but as the year goes on, it gets better. Why? Because you became conditioned into it. So if, if I was coaching the NFL, I know I could steal the first four weeks by preparing my guys better. Yes. I'd be able to steal the first four weeks and put myself in a three and one advantage going into the rest of the season. And remember, you break it down into fours. It's, it's September, October, November, December. One of those is going to be a five game, uh, you know, five weekend month, month yes. where you're going to get five in there. So. If you can go three and one, um, three and one, three and two, three, you get to 12, you got five. You're just trying to steal games. You're trying to hone your product. You're trying to understand what you can do well and what you do bad. Put yourself in a position where you can do more of the stuff that you do well. Get yourself in that position where you can keep on doing it. And so. I think the two teams that are in the Super Bowl right now did do that, right? Early in the season. San Francisco looked like, wow, they, they are world beaters. And they had, what, a down month right before the season ended? Well, they had a, in the, they had now they lost to Baltimore. They lost. Nope, they lost to Baltimore right. at the end of the season when Purdy threw four interceptions. They didn't look good. They had a three-game losing streak. Three-game streak. After going 5-0, and oh, yep. they went uh, three straight games where they ended up losing. Right. So they went 5-3. and three. So you're looking at October, maybe into the uh, first week of November. Uh, everybody was scratching their hands, you know, heads. What the hell's wrong? But they had uh, Williams was out and uh, Samuel was out. So you had Samuel two guys. They were out together. Yeah. There was more pressure coming on the quarterback. Decisions CMC had to be made quicker. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what ends up happening, uh, you know, at that time. But then they righted the ship. They finished strong except against Baltimore. But you had that. I think, right, that you had that hot start. You look at KC. KC did not look good yeah, they in the beginning of the season. Yep. But the defense did. Yep, they struggled. The defense started the year off keeping teams under wraps. And all right. of a sudden, you're like, hey, they're still like, they're not the KC we're used to, but they're still well, really good. I mean, they finished 11 and 6. Yeah. You know, they probably lost some games they didn't think they were going to lose when they looked at it at the beginning of the season. And they lose the But guess what? 11 and 6 football teams can make the, the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. <laughs> You've seen it in the past. <laughs> You know, the team that uh, starts to become dangerous as they get to the playoff, but it's a team I don't want to play. I don't want to play these guys. Jeez, I don't want to play. It was Green Bay. Dallas ran into Green Bay. Right. And Dallas got uh, humbled. Then the Green Bay, they went, uh, where did they play the next one? Green Bay. They went to Frisco? Green Bay went to Frisco. Yeah. And and then they were just a little too good. It, listen, Frisco wasn't perfect. 
No, no. Listen, Frisco it, wasn't exceptional. It was, a, it was another second half. But uh, they did party. enough. Yeah, they did enough to go ahead and beat the Green Bay Packers. So and, here you go. You find the, you know, San Francisco gets in there. It's never sexy. And the path there is kind of filled with potholes and, yeah. and stuff that happens over the course of time. It's not sexy. But uh, the team with, uh, you know, the, the intestinal fortitude and the grit and the team that can execute at the end of the day is the team that usually ends up going to the Super Bowl. I like it. I like it. We got a good Super Bowl ahead of us here coming up in a couple of days. EO's got a couple of uh, couple props for us, a couple props for us that he wants to put out there. EO, what's good? Oh, I'm in the back. Hey, what's up, EO? Yo. <laughs> I love how much bigger that I'm in, guys. That's cool. Hey, All right, yo. so first off, prop bet-wise, I always find it total BS that the odds on the coin toss is in 50-50. It just never is. The juice always goes to Vegas. So never bet the coin toss, people. Don't do that. Um, so I want to get to the passing yards because that's where the real story of this game's coming from. Uh, Mahomes' numbers this year in general down, and same with his passing. They're not an aggressive team. Around the NFL, better. all the numbers. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So his number is set at 262 and a half. Do you think he's going to approach that? No. I don't think he gets close to it. I think this is going to be a defensive Super Bowl. Um because these are two of the best defenses in the NFL, and I think that uh, the Chiefs and San Francisco are going to hold both passing games under wraps. I think um, I think Frisco's defense has somewhat been disappointing to me during the playoffs. I think they're capable of more. I don't think they're happy. I think the addition of Chase Young they thought was going to provide something for him, it hasn't. He's miserable in um, the run game. Yeah, well, you well, you watched him yeah. lollygag yeah. on that touchdown by yeah. Jameer Gibbs. He just kind of lollygagged yeah. over there. He could have been able to make the play, but he doesn't move. There's nothing worse than a guy with talent that doesn't want to use his talent because he doesn't want to – it seems like he doesn't want to be there. Yeah. So either way, um, that's disappointing. Uh, but I think Frisco, because of what they put on tape the last couple of weeks, I think there's going to be a little bit of anger. I, I think they want to play better, so I think they'll find a way to play better. I also think the, the second off- half was really nice. I think the offensive line for the Kansas City uh, squad yeah. is susceptible. Yes. I think you got two good defenses playing against two measured offenses that like to do things a very specific way. Uh, I would guess this game goes under, and I would go under on the passing yardage. Yep. All right, cool. So we're going to stay in the passing yards world. Purdy, so far in this playoffs, has started slow each game and then been on fire at the end. So there's a prop bet. Which quarterback will get to 200 yards first, Mahomes or Purdy? I'll go with Purdy. Yeah, I'd agree because I think there's more of an opportunity for you to just get a little something to Debo at the end of the game when they're maybe maybe it's a close game and they're pressing a little bit and he's able to break something big. Um, I and would go also, Purdy. who wins the toss? This is an important thing. Who wins the toss? Because whoever wins the toss is going to defer, putting the other guy on the field first. Yeah. So he's probably going to have an extra possession. So if you could find a way to steal a possession, but the 200 might not come to the team that defers then, if you think about it. They defer. They get the final possession of the half. They get the first possession of the second half. That may be the time. So the team that's going to win the toss and defer might be the team that you want to get the 200 yeah. first. Oh. And that's scary to wait just to think about that. <laughs> You know, how do you break that down? Who's going to defer? Do they both defer every time they win? Or the, the, is one going to say, I, I want the ball? If I'm not mistaken, didn't uh, didn't San Fran take the ball in one of the, one of the games that's to what get I, up quick? That's I what I'm worried about. Did, yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Staying on Brock Purdy, something that's come to the surface in the playoffs is he's been running the ball, like oh, yeah. in big crucial downs. Oh, yeah. The over-under, to me, this is one of the – biggest plays this weekend is it's only at 12 and a half rushing yards for Brock Purdy. Do you see him going over that? I'd say all he has to do is get one run and he might go over that. But, yeah. you know, if, if a guy rushes the ball eight times a game, um, if you rush the ball eight times a game, you know you can get over that 12 yards. My problem is if he rushes the ball for 15, they go into victory formation and he takes he three knees. Three, he takes yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've seen guys lose – on that. I think I think that might be a situation here. I don't think Purdy's going to want to get out and use those legs nearly as much in this game because well, the Chiefs necessity. are coming with some hitters. Out right. of necessity for out sure. Out of necessity. Out yeah. of necessity. Yeah. And I, the one thing that I have loved, and the Ravens really brought it, the Ravens brought 
uh, the funk. I mean, that was a physical football game, and it's the great thing you get in the playoffs is you yeah. that that level rises, the intensity rises. Yeah. If you lose, you're done, you go home. I think the intensity that you saw, and I don't know if it's sustainable across a 17 game season, but that's the challenge for the coach to get that to happen over 17 games. The intensity in the playoffs is wonderful. Oh, yeah. No, they, and, they, and the play, and even, you know, guys make mistakes, guys screw up, guys got brain farts, but the intensity and the hitting and the contact is just beautiful. No, and I, I think that's re- a reason why Baltimore is not here because the intensity raised. And you saw on the offensive side, they cracked under the intensity and the pressure where KC was like, you know how we we do this. We've been here before. We're not worried about this at all. So they were able to keep their composure, go down the field and and maintain the win. Kelsey is coming off a huge championship round. He, uh, I believe was 11 targets for 11 catches for him. Baller. Uh, Yeah, he was great. So his numbers for the Super Bowl are six and a half catches and 71 yards. I think that's easy over and over. I don't even yeah. think that's difficult because <laughs> that's, that's, he will be targeted a bunch. He averages 10 yards a catch. So I mean, I'd say he's the, he's 11, all of Pat Mahomes' right. major targets pretty much right. for the day. I, yeah. I mean, if I'm them, I'm taking away Rice and Kelsey, but Kelsey always finds a way. He runs those little serpentine routes where yeah. you think he's going somewhere and he goes someplace else. Um, and when you're the favorite target, you're gonna you're the one that's going to be looked at nonstop. Yeah, he just uh, – I think it's – listen, you can go over and over, and Kansas City still loses the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, oh, yeah. you can have an opportunity. nine yeah. catches for 95 yards, and there's a chance they still lose. I just – I'm still just so amazed by how he finds his way open. He's, what, 6'7", 2, 235, 240? I have no idea. And, and, he, and he's always open? <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's like, hey, guys, follow the big one. The big one in red. Follow him. Well, know. and I mean, but they run the routes, and they run the combo routes, oh, and yeah. they put them together. And then all of a sudden, one guy brain farts, thinks, hey, he's going here. And then two guys are covering one guy, and all of a sudden, he's floating in the open. Oh, my goodness. You'd think two guys would be covering him, and they'd leave the flat wide open. But <laughs> he, it doesn't happen. He's pretty amazing. Yeah. What else you got here? Is that it? Um, We'll go to some, some fun ones to wrap it up. So the anthem. The number is set at the lowest number in the history of Anthem lines. It is at 90 seconds. They're expecting Reba to rip through this national anthem. There hasn't been one under 90 seconds in like six years. So you got Reba with the uh, with the loss of, uh, who did we just lose, Toby Keith today? Yeah. I think, you know, she might put a little something special on there. Yeah. Who knows? I'd, I'd, uh, I'd go I- over. I'd probably minute and a half. I'd go. I'd go over a little bit, but it, but it's gonna be a close one. That's a close one. I feel like you know. We, usually when you get the, uh, the the Whitney Houston's or the Beyonces and mm-hmm. uh, the the Jasmine Sullivan's in there, you know, we a little little more life to it, a little length. I got a prop long for pauses. It. I got a prop for you. What it. you got? Do three bears make the Hall of Fame? Oh, so you got McMichael, you got Julius Peppers, and you've got uh, Devin Hester. Do three bears make the Hall of Fame? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. I, would say I see yes. a lot of silence. Eric's say not yes. saying anything. I would say yes. Okay. I would say Mongo's in. Julius Peppers is it? Pe- Julius, yeah. Julius Peppers is automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at him where he's at on the sack well, charts, no, yeah, he's like Pe- fourth Pe- or Pe- fifth. He's automatic. Your only question is Devin Hester. Devin Hester. Is he or is he not going to get in? I think Devin's going to get in this time around because they're sick of the story. <laughs> Did you bring this up just to bring some more? Uh, no, no, shots? no. <laughs> I'm not going to take shots at Devin. Eric, what do you think? Um, all three? I think he gets in. I think all three get in. I don't think all three deserve to get in. Oh, wow. Ah, yeah. right. Bow. <laughs> Let's go to some T-Swift Oh, Ooh, props. T-Swift prop. Uh, it is the underdog, but will she be shown before the national anthem? Yes. The minute she enters the building, there'll she be a shot be on her. Yes. Remember, there's a four-hour pregame show. Yeah. And I don't know if you've listened to NFL guys talk about the NFL, but they bore the living hell out of me, okay? All them guys are up there, all the different, you know, CBS, the yeah. NFL Network, ESPN, blah, 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 blah. The minute Taylor shows her face, they'll probably have a plane at the airport, you know, or camera at the airport <laughs> showing her plane land. <laughs> there she is. It's Taylor all the way from Nagasaki, Japan. <laughs> she had a concert last night. And she's been in the air just to see her man, the big 
six seven foot two thirty five big cake <laughs> that he is. <laughs> Playing the Super Bowl, and we're in Vegas, and it wouldn't be a Super Bowl without Taylor yeah. Swift. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. It'll it'll be winter plane land. Still have the cameras at the airport. All, all I ask is, can we get more people that have won Super well, Bowls the, actually breaking down what it's like to be in a Super Bowl? Yeah. I feel like every year we've got the dude is like, hey, what's hey, it like? What, what Super Bowl do you go into? Yeah, what, what? this one. This is what you get. It's su- <laughs> it's such a long time. Between when you warm up and yeah. when you get on the field, you can't get over hype. You can't because you're exhausted when you come back in. Right. Right. So we'll hear that out of every former <laughs> NFL player that played. <laughs> It'll be nonstop. You're going to hear it all the time. Now you got to settle down. You got to cool off. You got to get ready. Don't be too over amped because. Oh, boy. Yeah. And then I just look. I at promise them. you, I don't start watching the game. Until the the thing is close to being over, the national anthem. Here's here's what I here's my that's when I come le- to the legitimately game. what I do. I'll turn the game on, I will mute the the pregame show. Yeah, and I'll turn on music. I just like having the field on the screen as I'm walking through the house, parties going, all of that mm-hmm. stuff. I just like it. the field's there. Yeah, I mean that's that's my day. That's yeah. my day. And then then national anthem, boom, we're on, we're going. Beautiful national anthem. Yeah, Reba, Reba's probably going to do a pretty good job. Reba's going to do a nice job. 91 seconds, Reba. 91 yeah. seconds, you, You're taking the over on yeah. that one. Oh, Extend oh. that final note a little bit. I know <laughs> I know you're elderly, but, you know, Ray. take your oxygen before you get out there. Exactly. Continue it on forever. Hey. Uh, keep right, going. Let's, <laughs> let's wrap it with this. As I cut you off. Um, who's your winner and who's your MVP? Uh, San Francisco's my winner and Brock Purdy's your MVP. Uh, I will have a tough time ever betting against Kansas City. So I'm going to say Kansas City is the winner. And uh, by default, they're going to make Pat Mahomes the MVP. Even though they'll probably be more impactful players in the game. I would say Chris Jones I, probably would I'd be the guy. I'd say a flyer for me would be, um, and a running back hasn't won it in a long time, but Isaiah Pacheco. If he breaks loose, you never know yeah. if Kansas City finds a way and it'd be like Pacheco doing something yeah. silly that, you know, some poor tackling on San Francisco's part. And all of a sudden he's got two touchdowns and 150 yards. Then I, and he might be at like 50 to one. Yeah. I mean, 35 to one because a running back, I don't think has won this thing in a while. So runs like a cartoon character. So it throws me off every time. Hey, appreciate you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave that five star review. Duncan, we're still waiting for the call for your call. I'm Pat the designer. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Peace.